Hello and welcome to another episode of the Comicsly Podcast, the official podcast of Comicsly.com. You're listening to episode number 28. In this episode, Angela and I are going to be discussing the 2001 movie In the Mood for Love. This is a movie that was directed by Wong Kar Wai and a co-production between France and Hong Kong. The, the two main leads. I, I think we say this in the episode, but I'm saying it here just in, just in case we don't, because sometimes we we forget that stuff or don't have our, our notes in front of us. But the two main leads of In the Mood for Love are Maggie Chen and Tony Lung. This is a movie that Angela had to watch for uh, a class she was taking last year, I think, in, in college. So she was watching it anyways. We decided it was something that would be interesting to talk about on the podcast. And I'm really glad she had that suggestion because this was a really good episode. I think something I really liked about this episode is that it gets at, and I think we I think we literally have this discussion, it gets at or gets us to this idea of kind of why we started doing the podcast. Something that, at, at least for me, and I think a little bit for, for Angela, because we've talked about this something that or, or one of the reasons that we do this is because you know we both watch and consume a bunch of stuff the way anyone does and I think it's an exercise for both of us to figure out how to talk about that stuff right how do we talk about the stuff that we really really like and analyze right figure out why we like it as much as we do right why are the things that are our favorites our favorites and can we talk about that intelligently so, right so it's kind of that exercise for us i know angela sometimes gets a little bit uh, uh frustrated with me because she wants uh, a, a few more jokes um so I've, I've been trying to to work on that yeah this is this is an interesting episode because we have a little bit of that discussion and it's a movie that really forces us to try to figure figure out why do we we both end up liking the movie right it, but it's it's one of those ones that's like it takes some work to figure out why you you like it um beyond just saying hey that was pretty good and, and and leaving it at that so without further ado this is our episode on in the mood for love hope you enjoy are you in the mood to podcast right is now that good, is that a good joke oh i get it i get it <laughs> it took you a little bit but i get it so as I was watching it, one of the things that I was thinking about, you said there was someone in your, your class who raised their hand and said nothing happens in this movie. Yeah. I feel like I disagree with that. I don't, th I feel like they watched a different movie or something. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? I get where he was coming from. Cause he was like, he was like the end. Cause I think he was talking about the ending. Cause like you expect there to be some big dramatic ending where like they like, run off into the sunset and like make out but like that didn't really happen so i guess like it, it, i see how maybe people felt like it was a non-ending but like also i think that is just dumb you think that's a dumb thing to say yeah because it's just like I, yeah like i get it but like, it's like mm. what did the professor say if i he said okay anybody else <laughs> he didn't even acknowledge. No. Or he, but he gave the bare minimum of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's oh, good. I'm just typing <laughs> their names into the chat because also had to Mr. Mr. Chow and, and Mrs. Mrs. Chan. 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 Okay. Yeah, I guess well, we should probably set this up a little bit. Why we're so we're talking about in the mood for love today. And do you want to set up why we're doing this, Andrew? Do you want me to do that? Yeah. So I. I'm taking a Chinese film class, and this is convenient for me because I don't have to do any extra work really outside of preparing for this uh, podcast because I just watch these films in class. We're not going to talk about all of the films I watch in class because some of them are pretty boring. Um, <laughs> like, I had to watch like a silent film last week, and like, it was silent, and now I got to write a paper about it. Some of them are old, like, like 1930s 1940s like old old movies yeah and like it's funny because like my professor at like the first day of class he was like all right listen up like we're not gonna be watching like entertaining movies. so if you're here to like sit back and like watch a movie every thursday night and like be entertained and like you can drop the class right now it's cool i'm telling you to and like i only like 20 percent kind of wish i did but like it's fine <laughs> Do you, did you notice like the numbers in the class change at all when like, oh, yeah, the next yeah. day? It did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is like fair because like 
I mean, yeah, like, it's not, it's like, so the class is from Thursdays, 2.30 to 5, and then we get an hour break, we come back to watch a movie at 6. And so, like, that's, like, a really long time. And, like, yeah. two and a half hours, that's, like, all lecture. Mm-hmm. Like, like last week, I was, like, falling asleep in lecture. And, like, the dude sitting next to me, he was, like, watching me, like, fall asleep. And he was just, like, <laughs> and it was just, like, yeah, man, I'm falling asleep. What do you want me to do about it? And then also, it's just, like, the people in my lecture, like, it's Chinese film class. A lot of, like, Chinese international students are there. Mm-hmm. Um, which confused me at first because I was like, why, why are you here? Why? But like, I get it because like, you know, like there are people go to like American film classes who are Americans. Yeah. Like that was just stupid of me to think. But <laughs> so, yeah, he was Chinese and we were like talking and he was like, man, I feel so stupid in this class because everyone has really big thoughts. And I was like, oh man, me too. I don't even know the history. Because like people will like reference like historical events that happened in China and be like, well, obviously we all know what happened in 1976. And I was like, no, we don't. I don't. Help me. The professor will say that or someone in the class will say that? Both. Both. Okay. Does the anyone... professor, one thing, I, I really like the professor, but um, what, sometimes he'll say things that just like annoy me because like I'm in a bad mood. Like one time he was like, and of course, we all know French poet Baudelaire. And I was like, Baudelaire, like series of unfortunate events, Baudelaire. I have no idea what you're talking about. I watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians on my free time. Like You're talking no. about um, the orphans. What were their names? The Baudelaire Violet twins? Claus, Sonny Baudelaire. That's okay. what I thought he was talking about. That's not what he was talking about. Are you talking about Violet Baudelaire and... You're yeah. talking about the Netflix like series like or the yeah. Are, are you talking about the, the Netflix series or the Jim Carrey movie? <laughs> the Netflix series slash the books because I read the books first because I was okay. a very well read middle schooler. Um, I don't yeah. remember where I was going with this. <laughs> no, you I were just talking. You were talk- You were saying how he he'll bring up historical events or like poets or authors who just like you. Yeah. Sort- he assumes you know or that. Or like name drop like really famous Chinese literary individuals i'm just like i haven't taken that class yet like i know that's another class you teach i'll be there spring semester but like until then like you gotta explain a little bit man yeah does anyone ever raise their hand and be like can you explain that a little bit or no because no one wants to be the dumb person okay so you um you it's probably you're i mean it's you're definitely not the only person who's it's going over your head like that's there's a lot of people yeah. who that's happened. Okay. Maybe like okay. five. There's only, no, I'm sure it's way more people that it's going over their head. Uh, there's a couple of podcasts I listen to that are definitely like that, where they're just like, yeah, this and this. And it's like, eh, you know, I, I don't it's know. Just what like, this is why about. people think film critics are pretentious. Yeah. This is I the think... reason. This is your well, fault. Help me. So, Explain it to me like I'm five, please. I think that's actually, I think that's actually kind of an interesting place to start. So watching this, kind of made me wish that I knew a little bit more about film history in general because so one thing this movie does a lot of is it's sort of if it's if it's showing you a character if it if it's showing you a character most of the time it's showing you the character like you you see that you're you're sort of at an angle from them you're never just looking them dead on in the face you're at an angle you're looking at them Mm -hmm. at an angle and they're looking at something else and there there's usually a soft focus in the background where the background is Mm -hmm. kind of blurry and then the character is in sharp focus but and then they'll either they'll either just be like staring off or they'll be like having a conversation and it, it won't actually switch to the other person it'll just it'll just stay in that one shot but the first time i ever saw that type of shot was in Miss the first season of Mr. Robot. You, you've seen that one, right? Or you've seen a couple episodes of that? With uh, the dude from Night at the Museum, Night at the Rami Museum. Malek. Yeah, with Rami See, Malek. See, this is where yeah. I get my, like, my, like, what's it called? That's where I draw my, like, conclusions and comparisons from pop culture. <laughs> apparently, pop culture, if you like pop culture, you're stupid. So, But they, or Sam Esma, who shot that show, he's the showrunner, he, they do that all the time. Like, you're never just looking straight on at a character. They're always you're always off at an angle, soft focus in the background, and they're looking at something else, right? Just sort of this oh. idea that like either that they're they're not talking to the camera, right? That you're somehow an observer, or that you know sometimes there is something going on in the background, right? Or that like this scene might be going on, but like that there is some like there is a sort of world behind 
that person as well. And that was that show, Mr. Robot was the first time I ever saw it. And, you know, to me, who's never seen it before, like, oh, this is sort of like a novel way to shoot a, a dialogue scene between two characters. Like, this is really cool, right? And it, you know, it was, you know, that that show has a ton of cool stuff going on. But that was like, you know, one of those things that sort of like separated a little bit. And then I watch this movie and it's like, oh, this person, uh, Juan Carway, who directed this movie, like he's doing that all the time, right? And so it kind of made me wish that like I had the sort of, I had that sort of film knowledge because like, oh, this person in this TV show or this movie is is doing something here and that thing was, you know, popular back here and this person first did it or this group of movies started doing it back 20, 25 years ago or something. And like, obviously there's like so much of that to know, like, it, yeah, it could become pretentious, right? Which, which I think, mm -hmm. you know, film, the worst version of film criticism can, can veer into. But I think that like, it would be cooler to know that sort like, or I would, I would, I wish I knew that sort of like general history or was able to like see, see those lines, right? How uh, th this movie, right? I think it's from the 80s right? Mm -hmm. How this is connected to that TV show that's coming out in like the mid 2000s. Um, I don't know. I don't like what do you what do you think about that? Like, is that something that this class is doing for you? Like, are you do you think like on the whole, you're gonna like appreciate that you have this context now for like stuff going forward? Or is it is it yeah. mostly just like frustrating? I think it's a little mix of both because like I mean like you know how like I am um, especially when you talk about stuff on the podcast like I don't challenge myself to think very deeply about things or like to like force myself to like pay attention well and like notice things or like make connections so it's like I do feel like I'll get a chance to like work on that in this class. I'll be complaining about it the entire time, but I think at the end, <laughs> I'll like, like it. And I think, I mean, I guess, ho so yeah, so this is In the Mood for Love's the first one we're going to do, and then we're going to sort of follow this through all, all semester. All right, I just added the stuff oh. I was going to talk about. My my main talking points that I okay. kind of maybe stole from people in my classroom discussion. No, that's good. I have like a few. I have a few things, but not a ton. Um, so that's good. But well, yeah, we'll f sort of like follow this. What the movies this class is going all all semester. So this will go, you know, up in into December. This I think there's like six episodes that I we have I have mapped out so far, and a couple of times we'll. But we'll if they about... suck, we won't do them. Yeah, right. Yeah, right now I think I have six episodes planned out and a couple times there's two movies that sort of seem thematically linked based on what I can tell based on your like syllabus and things. But yeah, I guess if one of you watch something and you're like that was horrible, then we'll mm -hmm. we'll drop it. But yeah so uh do you i guess where do you what do you want to start with so you've got what is what do you mean by acting out scenes that's at the top of your list or should we like explain what quickly with how it happens what it's about yeah yeah i think that can be done pretty <laughs> shortly it's i can do it in like a sentence yeah go for it so mr chow and miss chan they're both married but their spouses are like not really present and then we eventually figure out that they figure out that their spouses are having an affair with each other. And the movie kind of wants you to think that, that there's also like a connection between Mr. Chow and Miss Chan. And like, but they don't want, but like a, one thing that they keep saying is like, we're not going to end up like our spouses. Like they don't want to actually like cheat mm -hmm. on each other. And the act, you know, at the scenes role playing note that I have here was about how like, it was, it's kind of like trippy at first when you don't realize that they're like role playing like each other's, how their spouses are having their affair. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you hear voices and you don't see people, and then you realize that they're acting it out, especially, like, I didn't really understand that was happening until there was, like, Mr. Ch Mrs. Chan was, like, confronting, quote-unquote, her husband, and they were like, did you catch that? So, there's, I got, there There was a couple, there's one time when they act out, I think they're in that hotel room, right? It's, like, that hallway with the red drape. Uh, yeah. And then and in that, they go into that hotel room, or she comes to him in that hotel room, and, and they act out her confronting her husband asking him are you cheating on me and you yeah. you only see the man from the back so initially you think it it is her husband and then it sort of the camera cuts to the front and you see it's Mr. Chow and that they're role mm -hmm. playing something what was the rest of your thought with that one um i don't know i think like i just thought that was like interesting i didn't really mm -hmm. have like a thought about it i think kind of i could sort of tie it into like just like their relationship as like a whole and like 
uh, sort of like it was like there was the movie or the film was kind of like playing into like us as an audience wanting to see them like end up together and stuff, but not really like giving us that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely messing with our expectations, right? And I guess that's when when you were saying about like you understand how someone's like, oh, nothing happens in this movie. I feel like that there's like, that's one of those scenes where the movie's kind of letting you know, like, this isn't what you want to happen or what you think should happen. Like, that's not where we're going with this, right? Because they're like, they they don't even, they don't, they're not going to, I think that's a very deliberate scene where the movie's telling you, we're not going to give you that sort of emotional catharsis of letting, of letting you see her confront right and and the first time she does it she slaps him right before you see that it's mr chow we're not going to give you that scene and so i yeah i think yeah i i think that's one of those scenes where it's kind of it's sort of letting you know yeah this isn't going to end they're not this whether you want to talk about like ends up happily right they're not going to end up together like this isn't that thing yeah i like this idea of like role playing though right i think that 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 also comes up uh when when they are when they're at their i think they go to dinner a couple times but there's that one time they're at dinner and they're and they're looking at the menu and she closes it and she tells him to order for me and he asks her why and she's like because i don't know what your wife would like Mm -hmm. right and and then i think he makes a comment like he puts a little like sauce some type of like sauce on her plate and then she makes a comment like your light your wife likes her food spicy right indicating that he did order for her the thing that his his wife would often order right and so right i wonder if that's bringing i'm just thinking about this now but is that bringing up this question that like maybe they don't i mean there is a there is one point when they say like i didn't he's i think he says to her i didn't didn't expect expect to fall in love or whatever love with you right so indicating that this isn't just like two lonely people who are adjacent to each other right it be i think it gets probably starts as that Mm -hmm. and so they're just sort of looking right she's looking for someone to fill the husband role and he's looking for someone to fill the wife role but that scene right there's that there's at least that one indication that it went something beyond that even if it did start in this sort of in this role-playing way that you brought up which i i like Mm -hmm. i i like that idea quite a lot i like that language yeah thank you it's not mine (laughs) (laughs) um what do you have your next thing is the music which do you have a specific like is there there like specific musical cues or certain songs they used or what do you what's this is just me personally i really like the music i especially really liked that like that i I don't know the uh, kind of like theme song with like the violin i think that was (laughs) a japanese theme song I don't know if the, you know what I mean. No, I know exactly. Like, but the thing is, I know exactly what you mean because it comes, it has to be like four or five, six times, right? You hear it a, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. It's called you, you Meji's theme. It's, 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 it's actually, um, it was written by like a Japanese artist, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I liked it, it. And then like, I was like super surprised to like hear like, first of all, I was surprised to hear Nat King Cole. And then I was surprised to hear him speaking or singing in Spanish, and, like, also, I was expecting the entire film to be, like, Mandarin Chinese, but it's actually not. It's, like, in Cantonese and then a little bit of Shanghainese. And so throughout oh, the entire okay. film, because, like, I can't fully understand Mandarin Chinese, but, like, I can pick up the difference, and I can pick up words. And, like, language-wise, throughout the entire movie, my brain, just as, like, a language learner, was so confused, because I was, like, I kind of understand the Chinese. I understand more of the Spanish song than I do of, like, anything <laughs> else. <laughs> but, like... I was kind of just wondering, like, what you thought did it add or, like, what, like, these song choices, what did you think of them? So this was something, this was something I wrote down. And one of the things I was thinking about is I think the movie does, so it's a pretty, like, slowly, the pace is pretty, that's not even totally fair. The, the It's an interesting, interestingly paced movie that... I don't know, maybe that's an irrelevant thing to say. Something I think it does very well is I think it teaches you how to watch it. It has, the the way it cuts from like, it cuts from one scene to the next in a very like interesting way. Um, one of the ways I, re- I really liked how they did this is there's a moment when Mr. Chow is sick and you don't, you don't actually see him. His friend comes out of his apartment, says that he's sick. 
And then he asked his friend to go get sesame syrup. And the friend is telling this to Mrs. Mrs. Chan and she goes into her apartment and then the, and then she pulls out the stuff to make sesame syrup. Right. And like any other movie, right. Is like her making the sesame syrup taking it over to him and her like taking care of him while we, while he's sick. Right. And it's like really cute. Right. But like, that's not right. That, that like, I like what this movie does is where she's like, I'm just going to make the sesame syrup. And then it just cuts to another scene, like on a different day when they're together and you know, the movie just kind of goes on. And then like a couple mem- a couple minutes later, he's like, thanks for making me that sesame syrup one day. Right. We're like, it's, we get to fill in the space of like, oh, she did that really kind thing for him when he like needed someone's help and his wife isn't there to like do that there for him, right? And we can sort of fill in those pieces of how their relationship builds, right? Or how it maybe goes from that role playing to the point where they do actually love each other. And I th- and and I think the movie does a really good job like telling you even though it has sort of this unconventional like cut in the way sort of it it moves from one scene to the next can be a little bit sudden, it's constantly telling you things to pay attention to, right? Like you always know it's a different day when she, cause her dresses are constantly changing, right? Like if she's in a different dress, it's in a different day, right? If like this song comes on, then you know, like, okay, there's some sort of emotional like development going on. Um, One of the other things in like it, uh, frames characters in hallways like all the time right where like that that character is the only thing right whether it's just one of them or whether it's both of them together it frames them in like hallways or stairwells like all the time right it's showing you directly where to look by not setting them in some bigger scene uh or even just giving you access to more like visual space and so, yeah, I think even though, like, yeah, it, it, I, I guess I found it a little bit, like, there were moments when I had to, like, go back and be like, okay, what did we jump to a different day? And I was like, okay, yeah, she has a different thing on or, like, what, how did we get here exactly, right? Like, once I started figuring out that I could pick up on those things in the movie, like, I felt much more at ease. And so I think it does a really good job, like, telling you how to watch it and i think that the music is a really big part of it especially that one music that musical cue that you mentioned yeah did anyone mention all her dresses yeah i forgot what they said though because it was like 4 30 on a thursday night and there's no <laughs> air conditioning in that room oh that sucks i really hope my professor well no no he's not gonna find this <laughs> and i'm never gonna tell him <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, what did it, I didn't, I so I didn't know that was Nat King Cole. I picked up when he said at the, I thought it was a French song. And then he, at the end he says, sada, sada. And I was like, oh, he's he's speaking in Spanish. Did they, I don't know what was. Quesas? Oh, quesas, quesas, right. Quesas, quesas, perhaps, perhaps, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Senora Dardis should be proud of me for remembering. <laughs> Shout uh, out to Senora Dardis. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, so what I don't know, did they say anything about that? Because I found I was like, oh, this is yeah, this is obviously not like a, a Mandarin or, or a Cantonese song. Like, what you know, did they say anything about like the significance of that? Or no, we spent most of the time talking about the final scene. Oh, you did. We will, we will get to. We'll get to. Okay. Do you have a little bit of the historical like? context for this or even just like the setting context for I where... do now <laughs> okay yeah so what what's that so in the movie it's supposed to take place in like the 50s 60s but it was filmed in the like the late 90s because it was released mm-hmm. in 2000 so there's like a couple of things that we talked about is one to get like the old tiny hong kong feel that it was in the 50s 60s they actually had to film it parts of it in like bangkok i think mm to get those buildings and whatever. So we talked about like, oh, that's cool. Um, And then also this will kind of tie in to um, the, you know, like the, we spent a lot of time talking about this. At the end, right before like the final scene in Karwat, those ruins, Mm -hmm. there's like a random documentary clip insert. Yeah, it's of Charles de Gaulle 
visiting Cambodia, which I'm assume I know I think was still occupied. I'm assuming was still occupied by the French at that point. Is that the? I I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> but something that we talked about was that like so during so Wong Kar Wai, I believe he's Hong Kong director, mm-hmm. and while he was filming this, 1997 which was apparently the year I was supposed to know about. Hong Kong, that's the year, I think July 1st, is like the handover of Hong Kong when it kind of went to mainland rule. From Um, Britain back to China. Yeah. And we were talking about like, how maybe did that influence the movie? And then also like, does that relate to like the documentary somehow? And I'm before like, I'll tell you what like we talked about, kind of curious, like, why do you think that like the director chose to like put put in that scene? Because like, for me, because like for me, when I saw it, I was like it felt very like out of place because it was like it felt random. But like, what do you? What was your interpretation of that? I didn't, I didn't know to be honest. Because what <laughs> I just, I have the movie open. I'm just trying to remember what immediately precedes it. Because she so what immediately precedes it. So what happened before it was it basically looks like they're, they're definitely going their separate way. She randomly has a kid out of nowhere, which is also interesting because it's like, it's really up to the audience to interpret like whose kid it is, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, we don't know what happened between them. We don't know if it's like his kid, whatever. And then the documentary and then right after you, it's in, the Angkor Wat scene. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I... So I didn't know... Angkor Wat is also in Cambodia. Bangkok. It's in Bangkok. Okay. I th- actually let me look at that. But the documentary is. It's in Cambodia. Angkor Wat is in Cambodia. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. I don't. I mean, I guess like. So the thing when the documentary first popped up, I was wondering. So sixty six, the Vietnam war was still going on and obviously vietnam and cambodia aren't the same country but cambodia was involved in that in that i mean, cambodia is is cambodia right next to vietnam i think it is yeah cambodia is right next to vietnam um so u.s the u.s went the u.s troops went to cambodia u.s occupied cambodia to like land their troops the North Vietnamese troops would go through Cambodia when they were like uh, transferring, when they were moving around, transferring things, uh, you know, moving, moving their armies around. I don't know if part of their like, their sort of like network of how they sort of stayed hidden from the U.S. forces went through Cambodia. I think it did. But like when the U.S. was firebombing and spreading napalm all over like Vietnam, like Cambodia was also decimated by that so you know it's 66 in the vietnam war and then we see i mean the 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 root the anchor wad's definitely not ruined right it's definitely it i don't know if abandons the right word but it's like it's ruined it's ruined okay in the Um, final scene in the final like when he i i so i put a clip a youtube clip to the final scene yeah it definitely looks like abandoned you see that one like the the one Buddhist monk sitting in the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely not in great shape to be, yeah, to be sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, there's something in there about like, I don't know. I mean, I, I could pull for something, but it would be like coming straight out of, straight out of <laughs> nowhere. Like there's, I don't know. Cause it like, I guess the thing that throws me off is, <clears throat> It's a it's the focus of that documentary scene is on the French the French commander Charles de Gaulle showing up, right? This isn't a thing. They're not highlighting like the US involvement, right? Which is sort of the main offensive force against North Vietnam Vietnam at this point. But like mm-hmm. yeah, I don't I, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. it it, it seemed so random way, to me. Yeah, me too. I didn't catch this at all. But so the way that like people in my class kind of saw it, my note says, move from the particular to the universal. Allow me to explain. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like what we kind of discussed in class at least was that like up until then, 
the movie really was kind of just in its own little world. Like it wasn't concerned with like any politics or anything that was happening. And then like randomly kind of abruptly were like pulled out of that into like the real world. And like, and then, you know, we get to the end where like he kind of is faced with the reality or he kind of like accepts the reality that like he ain't gonna end up with Mrs. Chan. Mm -hmm. But like, my question is like, if like people like if like most people don't catch that, then like is it still like good? I don't know. Hmm. Or like is something still like artistic or whatever? If like nobody actually or like very few people actually like understand it, or not like I artistic, mean, but just like I don't know. Maybe I'm just salty because I didn't catch it. <laughs> no, I mean, I guess I have two. Th- I. I... I, I, you know, I think that's interesting. I would like, I struggle with that a little bit, which we'll get to. I think, I just, I think you need to have like both, right? You need to have super accessible movies that like, yeah, we, we get, <laughs> we get what's going on here. Like, you know, Nazis are bad people or whatever, right? Like, you know, <laughs> you know, put, yeah, put the Nazis in front of Captain America and he can punch them like that. You know, we we understand that one but i and i think you need to have this that like you also need to have the other extreme right you need to have this like esoteric like sort of slightly inaccessible thing that need that like forces you to think about what's really going on here i think right art needs to be there needs to be that breadth to it uh Mm -hmm. because if it's if it's all one or all the other right like we're all worse off for it. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think this movie is probably, you know, this isn't like, if you're like sitting down watching like in the mood for love, like, you know, you're probably up for like trying to figure out what this means. Right. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I think, right. The, I think audiences are sort of self selecting in that, in that way a little bit too. Right. We're like, and again, I, you know, that is like, speaking from a Western perspective, like, I don't know what Wong Kar Wai's uh, reputation is in Hong Kong or China. Like, you know, was like, is he a famous director that like people were like excited to see it? And then people went there and were like, huh, what was that? And, you know, because they like, he makes other types of like, I don't know. Right. But I think, you know, just even like the the type of person that sits in that film, right. Even, you know, we're 20 years later, the types of type of person that sits in that film class and then comes back to the film class after the professor says this isn't <laughs> like enjoyable, right? You're like kind of up for the challenge of like deciphering what is going on. Um, so I, yeah, I guess I think you need both, right? You know, we can talk about whether or not it works, but right, I think it's like good to have that 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 sort of weird stuff. You said so. It's the move. They said those two scenes combined are the move from the particular, which is the. The, the rest universal. of the movie, and that this is the switch to the universal. Yeah. Okay. If I, I guess, like, remember correctly, it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. No. I. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. I. I would like. I guess I. I thought that I. In my opinion, at least, like, yeah, this movie's not concerned with like. Like broad pol like world politics, I guess, or like what country is occupying what country, um, but. I I guess I thought this movie kind of was I guess I, I I never thought it was totally like focused on these two people, right? Because you get so much of like the neighbors playing mahjong or mm-hmm. what you know, what his friends at work are doing, right? Or how she her relationship with her boss, right? Or you you hear so much even in the scenes like right there's a there's a like a, a whole scene where they're sort of trapped in a room and you're just sort of listening to the, 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 her, um, essentially roommates that the people that she lives with, you're just listening to them play Mahjong like late into the night. Right. And they're super annoyed about it. And I don't, I always felt like you got what was going on around them. Right. You got every, like she was going down to the noodle, like going down to the noodle place and who was, you know, you got these like trips into the outside world and just even the way that like, 
again, when, unless the camera was like focusing you on them, right. Or even the audio, right. You would hear people just like talking and you would hear these random snippets of background conversation. So yeah. again, that, not, not to say like, that's the universal, but like, I, I would have, I wouldn't have said like this, the, the, the movie is like, so totally like focused on what they're doing. I, I, I guess I think it did a good job of like contextualizing them. Um, I'm I'm just looking back now and I so I forgot at the beginning it gives us that little like opening that little opening sort of phrase yeah. which also does tell us when it's set I'm just like reminding myself of that now right so it I I forgot right it says it's set in Hong Kong 1962 and I I think reminding myself of that right and then imagining that their story plays out over a number of years, right? I think that documentary, I think like, I think it makes sense then. The documentary piece is to remind you like, oh yeah, like there was a horrific and bloody war that Western colonial powers were waging for no good reason because they thought communism was like, they thought communism was horrible and they were like, yeah, but it's going to come halfway around the world and destroy us. And, you know, so I, I guess I think that makes a lot of sense remembering when it was set and and all of that um yeah what did so what did did they have like readings on like the final 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 scene when he's like talking into the into yeah. the temple yeah that's what we spent the most of the two and a half hour long discussion um kind of talking about uh well do you because like the way the professor talked about it was like that was like the most like interesting in terms of like analyzing or like opportunity for like film things to like talk about. Did you like really have any like strong like reaction like oh this is like really like just this is really great about it or were you kind of just like yes yeah, it's, it's part of the movie? I don't know. I guess it was kind of moved. But I found I found the whole thing like pretty interesting, right? I think it's this he's. Again, I think that's another one of those scenes. If you if you look at that clip, right, he's he's only in the first scene, right, he, and you don't hear what he's saying, right, but he's sort of putting his head. He's like leaning in to this the wall of this old temple, and he's you know he's to the side of the frame for a little bit. Then it's sort of yeah, he's always kind of to the side of the frame while they're sort of having you look up at the rest of the ruins right and then it just literally cuts to like really beautiful shots of of the ruins or, or the rest of anchor mm -hmm. Wat. and like yeah I, I don't i guess i didn't know i guess it you know because we don't hear what he says it's just sort of this thing where like it's some i, I would imagine it's him at some putting to rest whatever this part of his life was right i guess we don't know if he's with his wife we don't know if he's alone right you don't is he like still writing martial arts serials but it is it seemed um it seemed like there was some sort of rev resolution for him at least right in in yeah in it yeah i don't know what i yeah i guess i'm interested in what the professor said or what you thought too i brought up a really good point that like really actually impressed the professor um i really liked it because it was, it felt like a really big departure from the way that the rest of the film was shot, you know, like, mm -hmm. the lighting. Someone else brought this up, too, that, like, up until then, everything, like, the filming, the angles was very, like, harsh. It was very, like, like, the angles were just, like, wacky, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. then, like, in those final, like, shots of, like, the ruin, it's, like, very symmetrical. It's very, like, someone just started, like, kind of stabilizing and yeah. kind of tied it to like how that was sort of like the stabilizing when Mr. Chow kind of like does his little secret thing into the hole and then like it's everything's like calm and like good. And so like that was kind of like the feeling that like the way that the camera, the way that was filmed kind of tried to like make us feel. And then the shots of the ruins, something that I noticed, that's what I, I don't like talking class that much because I don't want to sound stupid, but <laughs> Something that I brought up was like I really liked like in the final moments right before the screen goes black, there's like another like empty hole. Cause like you remember like the whole thing about say your secret into a hole and then like cover it with dirt and like that's kind of like a way to like confess or like unpack or like, you know, take the burden off and mm -hmm. you know, 
back and I was talking about how like I noticed like, right before the screen kind of fades to black there's like another like hole facing the camera and that is that and, the like, one with the grass growing out of it no 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 it was like the very very fun in the final final oh there's like a temple with a black hole mm-hmm. yeah okay and it's like I was kind of talking like was this like intentional as like a way of kind of like speaking to the audience you know mm. being like there's a hole what what would you say into it or whatever and like leaving it on mm. that or it was just like a hole and it just happened to be there when the camera was rolling. so i don't know mm. i think that's what kind of makes like movies hard to talk about those because it's just yeah. like i really could just be pulling stuff out of my butt and like really like over analyzing it and then like one car is just sitting it's like nah man it's just a hole <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's the fun. That's the fun part, right? That's why this is fun because mm-hmm. I didn't think about any of that, right? And like, I I like that uh, quite a bit, right? And you know, I think that's something we've talked about a lot, right? That's a tension with us, just because like there's we talk about stuff and it's like we don't know, like I don't know anything about <laughs> film history. I don't know anything about like I don't know a lot about TV, like you know, but like we can talk about the things that we liked. We can't put it in that context right so you know I, I i had that same thing i was like i'm saying this but like maybe this is actually really dumb and it, you know smarter people know it actually means this this and this thing and and but like i don't know it's fun right like how does how does that con how did that conversation you know just like because i know we've had that conversation how does the like how does that feel in class working that like when you're in a room with like your peers working out these ideas, like, does it feel, you know, I know it's like a group of people, so it can feel scary to say something, but it did like, I don't know when, so you said you, you said this thing, right. Did, were people like receptive? Does it feel like a, a well, space, like, like where you, you're comfortable doing that or, or how does, what's that sort of atmosphere? It's sort of like, but it's like when I said that the professor was like, Oh wow, that's so good. And like, he was like, I could tell he was like impressed. Cause, like he didn't notice it or whatever. But I think that like the class, there's like two groups of people. There's people who like come in with like really strong ideas and like their inter- their interpretations are kind of like set. Like this is what I think. And mm-hmm. then there's other people like me who are kind of just ready to be like, oh yeah, okay, that's that's it. Like mm-hmm. I don't like really push back on it. And I don't know if that's something that'll change as like we get to like be more like cool with each other because like we don't really talk to each other. Um, <laughs> Do you sit on opposite sides of the room and stare at each other? <laughs> You give each it's other like dirty we're all looks like we're all room. facing the same direction so like like even when somebody like talks if they're sitting in the back of the room nobody will turn around and look at them oh yeah like i don't know if that's just like weird i don't know if that's like normal is it like a lecture like, hall? i always wanted it's like a classroom but we're all facing the same way towards the teacher which also kind of doesn't really make it feel like a discussion either because mm. it's like the teacher's up front, he's calling people, and like people will sit to think and he'll either be like, oh yeah, yeah, really good, or he'll be like, okay, <laughs> what else? And so like, it kind of sometimes that. that time feels like, well, you gotta like say something, but it has mm. to be something that, you know, the teacher agrees that it can't just be totally like, Meh. and he doesn't do that too often, and like, I don't think he does it in like a, you're wrong type of way. Yeah. It definitely kind of feels like he has sort of an agenda of like things that he thinks are important for us to notice. Got it. Okay. So it and feels so like, yeah, it feels a little bit more like a conversation with him than a conversation with each other at this point. Cause this could change over yeah. the course of the semester. Cause like, okay. Yeah. Cause like no one will like push back really on ideas. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I guess I hope, you know, I hope that changes. That'd be, that'd be nice. I, I like that, yeah, but I, I guess I really like that interpretation, though I didn't, that didn't um, appear to me, or that didn't, uh, like, come to me at all. I, I'm wondering now, though, did did you spend any time in class talking about the the little, like, phrase or saying that shows up at the beginning of the movie and the one that shows up at the end of the movie? Did you talk about those at, at all? Not in depth. They were, like, just mentioned. Okay, because I think that one... I don't know. I'm going to read this one that comes up at the end just um, because I think sort of in the context of what we've just said, I think it probably reinforces what the professor and everyone was saying. So this ending one is let me pull it up and I'm literally scrubbing through the movie right now. So it says he remembers those vanished years as though looking through a dusty window pane. 
The past is something he could see but not touch, and everything he sees is blurred and indistinct. So I think there absolutely is this idea of letting go, right? Like if you know, if you want to talk about the metaphor of like talking into a hole, if you wanna, you know, somehow whatever whatever release was or whatever sort of shift was there, right? If you're talking about like the camera work, something was let go or, or changed, right? It's it is now behind him right and you do get those final shots of him like walking away right it actually doesn't like cut from him you get the shots of him like leaving right so he left something yeah in that place yeah yeah very cool very cool i I like that i like that a lot nice anything anything else not for me did you have anything uh i don't know like does this like I know this isn't the first movie you've watched, and you mentioned at the beginning now you've watched like a, a very boring, boring silent film. Does it, I guess I'm wondering, like, does it make you like so excited that you might watch more interest, like stuff you don't mm-hmm. expect that it ends up being interesting, or you just, you'll see what happens? What do you mean? I don't know. Like, were you expecting, I, I guess, like, so you didn't like hate, you didn't like hate this movie, right? You were, you know. No, this probably was my, the best one that we've watched so far okay and also because like this one's right right after we watched to live which was like a very like film deeply rooted in like chinese history and like i don't know a lot about chinese history so mm-hmm. watching this one right after one this one definitely felt much more like accessible for me to actually like contribute ideas to okay because that other class i was like oh my god like i'm dropping out right now like i <laughs> i'm i can't watch these films think like that and also learn all of chinese history like in like a day so I can actually like which I'm I'm feeling that's probably gonna come up again. But oh yeah, it was probably my favorite one so far. So does it like give you does it like maybe make you slightly more excited that you might be surprised by films that you watch later in the year, right? You might watch some stuff that's really boring, but like you might watch more stuff like this that you're like, oh that was actually like pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good then. That's good. Uh I think that's yeah, that's everything for me. Yeah, in the mood for love on HBO Max, so like very accessible too. Did he pull up HBO Max or did he have like a a, a DVD? He had like a DVD or something. And stars Shang Chi's dad, who everybody on TikTok is like thirsty for. Yeah. So you know, if you want to see young Tony <laughs> Leung, there's where you go. He can do the particular and the universal. Universal. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Marvel's not the universal, but it's like more universal than this. Um, yeah. All right. That, uh, yeah, In the Mood for Love. Check it out. That'll, we'll, we'll uh, go to the second half of the show after this short break. See you in a second. And we are back with our one shots for this week. Uh, I'm going to start off with mine, which is something that we've both and just seen more than I have. I've just seen the first episode and a little bit, uh, but it is Squid Game on Netflix, the show that uh, all the kids at school or <laughs> that makes it sound like I'm at school. I'm at school, but I'm not a kid at school. I'm a <laughs> I teach the student. I teach the kids at school, but I hear them talking about Squid Game in very, uh, in very excited tones. Um, they're probably getting something different out of it than I am, but that's fine. Yeah, and you told me to watch. You watched this before me. You watch. You've seen all of it, right? I've watched it all, and from I started Saturday at like eleven p.m. and I ended Monday at like midnight. Okay, and. Yeah, so hooked you, and then you told I I'd seen it on the the thing. I'd seen it on the like top of the Netflix uh, lists, and then you told me I should watch it. So I watched the first episode, and it's that. Oh, I should pull up the actor's name. He is like extremely 
compelling just what he's what's his name let me pull that up right now uh, uh, who what's Lee Jung Jae is the main actor he like he's like I don't know he you know he's kind of a I don't know if he's like a bad guy but he's definitely he's not a great dad at the very least he's not a great son he's taking advantage of his his elderly mother um living with her sort of taking money from her that he gambles a bit is not sort of prioritizing his uh his daughter's birthday in the way that you would hope that he does um but you don't like hate him right is yeah, i don't know what, right. how did you like, feel like about I'm, beneath all of that he's got a heart of gold you want him <laughs> to win right you can't have like a main character that you don't like yeah i think yeah so yeah just going off that first episode like he's doing a lot of the work to like draw me in just in the way he um yeah how he can go from like terrified to happy to like sort of sentimental um he, he's he's like his the the range and the way he like keeps you engaged is really amazing um i like this scene when he he's uh trying to win he's trying to play the claw game to win a birthday present for his daughter because he <laughs> forgot to buy one and the way he dances around with the little kid well first the way he just like loses it in the in the arcade and then the way he sort of dances around immediately after the little kid helps him pull a a present out um is is fantastic yeah what like what pulled you i know you've like you know you'll you'll binge stuff but did you feel like this was i don't know do you feel like this was something unique or what what really pulled you in about this one well, one, everyone on my For You page on TikTok was talking about it. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, one of the reasons I watched it so fast, because, like, spoilers kept on coming up on my feed. Oh, okay. And it was really annoying to keep on, like, swiping past it. So I was like, I just, and I was like, man, it's only nine episodes. I can just, like, crank this out and then, like, be done with it and, like, kind of join the conversation, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Also, like, because it was nine episodes, it didn't feel so, like, taxing to, like, watch it all. They're long though. You they're know? like an hour. They're those. They're those. They're not Itawan class yes. hour and a half, but they're an hour. They're a solid hour. But I am a seasoned K drama, C drama <laughs> watcher, and I am used to that. <laughs> you got the stamina for it, right? Um, also, so Calvin was watching it with me too, and he doesn't really watch my TV shows with me. So I was like, man, if he's interested. I got, 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 got like watch all of it. Mm, okay. But also, because like it just felt like very like different, especially from just like K dramas that I've watched before mm -hmm. that, like i just i wanted to know what happened and like usually when i want to know what something happens i'll like spoil it for myself but look in the wikipedia page and, like i don't want to do that this time so i just kind of was like well i then i need to watch it right away all of mm -hmm. it did it so i've seen a lot of people and i've seen articles being like no it does or not yes it does uh, a lot of people have compared it thematically to the movie Parasite, which won Best Oscar in 2020, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of um, a movie that is very unflinching and critical of the huge sort of the huge class divide between rich and poor in Korea. What is what is par what is this there? Did they say what city Parasite is set in? I don't remember. Is that i have no idea okay i'm gonna look it up right now i don't know did you feel do you feel like those comparisons are fair do you feel like that's like nah this is doing something different like it like it's also talking about that but it's doing something different i don't know what do you think i don't know part of me felt like that comparison was like a little bit shallow because it's just okay. like oh yeah that one other korean okay. popular media okay. that you know of let's just compare it to that like i get it but also it's like i don't think I don't think it's on the level of Parasite. Mm -hmm. um, just because, like, when it's, like, a movie and it's just, or it's, like, a TV show, it's just going to be different. Like, yeah. I wasn't really thinking of Parasite when I was watching it. Because, mm -hmm. like, one, like, I get kind of, like, yeah, like, there was, like, like about, like, wealth and, like, money. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was on that level. Does, so one thing I was thinking, because I, I think I, I've read things that, like, that comparison is, like, too cheap and easy. Like, that's not... Yeah, like oh, you just maybe compared don't... to that other Korean. Yeah, thing. yeah, that, like, that's just like no. <laughs> yeah, that could potentially. Yeah, that like has definitely has that potential. Did um, so there's like definitely some comedy in that first scene, and I know that like so the thing that I've heard kids at school saying, like the kids at school talking about, is like 
some of the deaths are quite brutal. Like it's pretty, it's pretty violent. So I'm, I'm wondering, does the sort of, does some of the comedy that you find in that, I guess I was kind of attracted to in the first episode, does that carry through or does it become more and more like violent and, and serious? It definitely becomes more and more like darker. Okay. Okay. All right. Cause I was wondering, yeah. What did was... you think about like, cause did you see people get killed and stuff? Or were you asleep for that part? No, you see the the red light green light game is at the end of episode one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, I don't yeah, I, it's all a blur. Uh, that is like shocking and horrifying seeing people get shot. I don't. I think like the thing that freaked me out more in episode one is when he's attacked by the P. He's so he's like in debt to a bunch of people in town, mm-hmm. and then they like beat him up in a bathroom, and then they like. I'm not quite sure what they were going to do, actually, but they took out, like, a tweezers and, like, shoved it up his nose, and they were going to pull on something, and then <laughs> yeah, um, they don't. They just punch him in the face and make him bleed again, but, like, yeah, I'm not sure what they were going to pull out of his nose quite ex- <laughs> exactly, and then the next time they say, like, it's your tongue or your eye or something, like, and you you feel like these guys are actually going to gonna do it. So, yeah, I, I think that is actually, like, or at least for me, I think that was more... That was a that was like more shocking than when you see the the because I think with the red light green light thing like a bunch of people die so I don't I'd have to go back and watch it just from my first impression was like that those weren't as like gory mm-hmm. as that as a bathroom it gets gory er as as the show continues it's, yeah and like I just remember like you're not very good with blood so I no, was like I'm a little bit tentative to recommend this to you that yeah the first episode's okay but I I, I generally don't do great. Uh, I think I'll keep... Last episode, you're really not going to like The last episode is like a half hour, right? Isn't that like pretty short, actually? I don't remember. I think the last blur. episode is like 30 minutes because I was looking at it and they're all like an hour. But anyways, I think, yeah, I'll watch some. But yeah, I might pull out. If, if it gets like, if it gets to a point where I'm like, I am not comfortable with this anymore, I'll pull out. But I think I'll I'll keep watching some more so I can... Uh, I can talk to uh, me re- about it. report back. Yeah, we can we can talk about it. Uh, what was what was your one shot, Inge? Oh, so yeah, my boss told me about this app called Libby. I already tell you about this. I forgot. I told so many people. I don't think um, so. So I got a library card the other day. Oh, nice. And you basically get a library card and you like connect a card to like this app called Libby that connects like so the card, the library I went to is a Madison one. It's like a like a network of libraries and you can basically like borrow books online and then read them on like so i on my like ipad oh nice because originally i i bought two months worth of kindle unlimited mm-hmm. and i was super excited because like oh i'm gonna start reading again like so exciting great a lot of the books on kindle unlimited are trash and they're very yeah. it's very tiresome to like sift through them you know mm-hmm. so i gave up on that but I'm really liking this new app. The only thing is, like, a lot of the books I want to read, there's, like, holds on them. I have to, because, like, a library can only give out so many copies, digital copies of a book at a time. Oh, so you have to put a hold okay. on them, and you have to, like, so, like three of the books, I have holds on them. And, like, there's one that's, like, I won't get for, like, several months, I said. But that's why I was able to uh, borrow minor feelings. And right now I'm reading On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous. So that's oh, what I'm reading now. who's that by? I've heard of that. Ocean Wong. On Earth, I've heard. Is that good? Uh, so far, yeah. It's like okay. It's definitely the language is like very like pretty. So I have to reread it a little bit to like okay. yeah appreciate it and also understand what's going on. Okay, okay. That is. Is this like any? I'm just looking at this now. Is this any library, or do you have to like ask if your library is part of this? part of this network i am not sure i only knew that my library was okay because i just use the library that my boss uses on the app okay i think you can like look it up before you go and like get your card yeah 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 okay yeah i've been meaning to go but to like, library card that's awesome yeah because it's just like i'm tired of like buying books that i usually most of the time don't end up reading so this yeah. is just like better. and like um, i'll finish it because i need to return it in like two weeks. nice yeah very cool libby app go to yeah go to your library they got they got free stuff they got great stuff that was at the madison library not the campus library right or was it the campus library no it's the madison library where is that one 
Um, it's by the Overture Center. Oh, so it's like pretty close to campus. Yeah, it's like two blocks yeah. away from my house. Oh, okay. Um, I did not know there was a library over there. That's great. Yeah, All right. me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, that uh, I think that takes us to the end of the show. So uh, you can follow Angela on Instagram at glow.angela, and you can follow her on Instagram at ijoone, I-J-O-O-N-E underscore. You can follow me on Twitter at Joey Glowacki. That's J-O-E-Y-G-L-O-W-A-C-K-Y. The music you heard in this episode is a lo-fi remix of the song Concerning Hobbits by Patrick Moonberg. Patrick Moonbird. You can find their music on Spotify and SoundCloud. Please rate and review this episode on Apple Podcasts or your preferred podcast listening app. You can also email the show by sending your messages to podcast at comicsly.com. All reviews and messages are greatly appreciated. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye.